after I wake up in the morning, I say, I will say, today's going to be a great day. Yes! After I walk into a meeting room, I straighten my spine. Oh, nailed it. After I put on my uh, construction hard hat at the power plant site, I will touch my ears. And after I take a sip, the first sip of my morning hot tea, I will take one deep meditative breath. So these are tiny habits that I've had. And basically, they're quick, self-designed behaviors that I've paired with something that I already do. I wake up in the morning. I walk through doors for a meeting room. When I was working at a power plant, I was really good about automatically putting that hard hat on for my health and safety. And I love my hot tea in the morning, white tea especially. But the thing about this is the creation of habits is a superpower. It's a superpower that I think everyone can have because it's self-designed. And as applied improv practitioners, that's part of what we do. We are creating curriculums and giving people the experience of developing skills, competencies, and habits are part of being able to form that. We help people to also create habits that express their identity. I mean, often we're, you know, we're the people who like love the authenticity to shine from those that we help. And sometimes we create new habits to kind of crush the bad habits that we've had. So what's the key to having a habit superpower? Well, here's what it is. I am a behavior designer and an applied improv practitioner. And I believe that in this first-of-a-kind approach is bringing behavior design and applied improv together. And what I'll share with you is how I see that they pair very nicely with each other, as well as what behavior design is and what's this tiny habits that I was talking about. So for those of us who are applied improvisers, those of us who've had the benefit of an applied improv experience in whatever setting, I would say inherently we are providing behavior-based training, coaching, teaching, and the like, right? And what we do is we're bringing these curriculums into a specific environment where people get to interact. We're giving them different types of exercises and tools where they can also make a variety of choices. And of course, in every <laughs> applied improv experience, there's just so much joy and celebration. So. What happens after that improv experience? You just, you know, everybody's experiencing that joy, right? As an instructor, as a coach, as a teacher, you see and you do that. It's, it's just what we're all about. But people leave this environment that they were in with a certain group of folks. Afterwards, they go home to their regular routines, their daily lives. And maybe something that they were taught in this improv experience was to navigate the workplace. So now what do you do? Are they going into this new workspace, their, their workspace area, and being like, all right, I learned this thing. What do I got to do? So some of the stuff that happened, and people can do that. They can figure it out, you know, depending on how the curriculum is. But one of the things I realized as a behavior designer as well is, hey, there's a way to, to bring behavior design into applied improv to help people sustain and retain what they've learned in these really quick, simple little ways. And so going tiny by practicing making improv skills stick better, I think we all do a job of you know, delivering the improv um, lessons. And I think this really kind of neat little tool, looking at behavior and looking at tiny habits is sort of a really neat thing to try out. So I will share with you about behavior design tiny habits, and about where this is being applied uh, this, this fall in San Francisco at Unfold Improv. So what I'm curious is, has anybody heard of behavior design? Just clap your hands above your head. Oh, great. And how many have heard of BJ Fogg 
the behavior sciences professor at Stanford University. Oh, this is great. And who has heard of Tiny Habits before my mentioning it today? All right, that's, that's great, that's great, that's great to hear. So for the two people who know, this might be a repeat for you then. So BJ Fogg, he basically shares that behavior happens when three things come together, motivation, ability, and a prompt. So if any of those elements do not come together, a behavior doesn't happen. And he calls that the Fogg behavior model. So again, behavior happens when motivation, ability, and a prompt happen in the same moment. Another thing about behavior is that it has three components. And the three components are this. Behavior is a type of person doing an action in a specific context. So if you're a person pouring water at home at the dinner table, it's different from you being the person who's a restaurant server pouring water for a customer. Same person, same action, different context. So that's kind of the basis of BJ's um, elements of behavior design. So what does tiny habits have to do with this? Where does tiny habits live in this world of behavior? Well, you remember behavior is motivation, ability, and prompt, BMAP, as it's um, also referred to in shorthand. So this here <laughs> graph is basically the FOG behavior model in more than four letters. So what you have is motivation, where this is low motivation, this is high motivation, and it relates to ability, where this is hard to do, and this is easy to do. And all in here are the prompts. And you can see that there's an action line that's green. And those prompts that you have, this space after there, that's where motivation, ability, and prompts come together, and that's where behavior happens. So the thing about tiny habits is that it lives over here. It lives where it's easy to do and where there's like little to no motivation. In fact, sometimes there's not a lot of willpower. There's some mornings that I get up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I need willpower. But sometimes I just, you know, step out and I'm like, today's going to be a great day. It's that kind of experience. So about a tiny habit, the way I structured it, it's very specific. And we like to call it a tiny habits recipe. So you remember after I put on my construction hard hat, I will touch my ears and celebrating the heck out of that. So the thing about that is it's really simple. A tiny habit actually just has one and maybe two extra pieces after I do a thing I already do. So you already have these things in your life, and we call that an anchor. You get up in the morning, you, know, you turn the ignition on your car, you open your door. I will do a new habit. So if you have a habit that you're looking at, for me it was health and safety for ear protection. I have a habit where I wanted to start drinking water. Same thing, I figured out like, oh, well, I will touch my water glass. Um, and the idea of celebrating is also really important because it helps where you wire the brain to have that positive emotion to this new habit that you're looking to create. So again, tiny habit lives in this little space here where it's easy to do. It's basically where the superpower is. So this is where the superpower and the sweet spot is for a tiny habit. And my thought about this is realizing, hey, this little area where I'm doing my health and safety stuff or trying to drink more water, this is not too different from bringing behavior design into applied improv. We're already doing behavior-based work. We're past the 50% mark. And we work with people who are coming in for their own self-improvement. We can help them self-design their habits with this really simple, simple little recipe. It's quick, it's simple. I don't know if you noticed, but the habits that I mentioned, they are like not more than 30 seconds. I mean, a few of them are like not even, I don't know, 10 seconds maybe. I will say that I do let my hot tea, deep meditative breath go on for a little bit longer, and I'm okay with that. So the point, though, is imagine we are looking at developing improv mindsets. And I suggest let's also look at developing improv habits mindset and have that superpower. Who's going to have the superpower? It's Untold Improv. So I am a community catalyst for Untold Improv. And Untold Improv is in San Francisco. It's a nonprofit improv community that serves improv for people of color. And one of the things 
about our organization is that we are looking to bring this vision of also having improv for social change. We have monthly free workshops, and we have, at this point, a seven-week cohort that's going on. We have two seven-week cohorts throughout the year. Um, so I'm excited that when I leave here, I'll get to share with them my experience here, sharing with you about Untold Improv. And the way that we're looking at bringing behavior design and applied improv together, is, it's pretty straightforward. And you're probably already doing it. You just didn't know that there's this taxonomy of the behavior design language around it. So in the in-class and in-person experience, we're looking at making sure that curriculum development and the cohort engagement and participation is really taking advantage of the motivation, the ability, and prompts that we can give folks. And we give them the space that they need. You know, maybe they want to opt in, maybe they want to opt out. It's part of us you know, realizing that we're creating this space for our community. Another way that we're also doing, and this is a little bit paired more directly with Tiny Habits is, for the two people that know about Tiny Habits, BJ does have a five-day email free online program where you can just learn how to, what a tiny habit is. You can, tinyhabits.com and you can see it. Um, and the thing about that is, imagine doing the exercise, you know, go ahead and walk and lead with your chest. You know, walk like a penguin. You know, we do these kind of really fun exercises. And it's like, okay, how does that translate into my real life? Well, if somebody's looking at confidence or there's a workspace thing, after I enter a meeting room, I will straighten my spine. You know, little things like that. Um, I won't go through the whole list of them, I could, and you can find me, because if you can't see the color of this dress, then we'll talk later or so. <laughs> but basically, the idea is creating these tiny habits for a daily practice. Now, what does this look like in our untold improv community? So there's some traditional ones, like the ones I was telling you. There's a lot of fun exercises and games that we do that can translate the simple types of activities into something that we're already doing into some new habit. You know, listening is one of them. I'll go on. So I want to share with you a couple things that are um, precious to me about Untold Improv. And I, I came to them because I just love their mission. So, um, whoops, sorry about that. I created my own technical difficulty. Let me do this. Okay, so I'm going to have to speed through to the end. Um, so basically what I do love about, there we go, um, the untold problem that's a little bit different. That's sort of this added piece. Because as people of color, there are different kinds of experiences that we have in the world. So I'm going to share with you a couple of tiny habits that actually are uh, habits that uh, we'll kind of explore in Untold Improv. So one of them is after I feel a microaggression toward me, I will take two deep breaths. I know I use that because I used to just get angry when somebody would do that or call them out, and it just helps to be able to realize there's this mindfulness aspect of that. And there's a lot of great improv, applied improv to help that. Another one is, after I feel the need to code switch, I will put my hand to my chest just to feel my heart. Because sometimes it's tough, and maybe it's just something that happens, having to experience feeling like, I'm going to do this thing. I don't even know I'm code switching. But I just do it, because that's what happens. I'm like, you know what? I want to go ahead and be part of learning that. So I'm not saying we're doing this necessarily within the context of the Untold Improv curriculum. But what I am saying is, you know, those are some special ways that you can see where, where can we bring improv for social change and find these really simple, tiny habits to do where things that happen to us already that we're already experiencing or routines that we have, we can just tack on this really fun little you know, or helpful or self-improvement moment to see where we can celebrate that we're being mindful and we're being the people we want in the world. 
So I want to say to you, I hope I'm getting very emotional. I hope you realize this is joyful tears. I wanted to say kind of as a tiny habits inspired um, gratitude for you. After I finish this last slide, I will thank you for sitting here listening to this presentation. Thank you very much for giving me the honor to share with you about my experience with bringing behavior design and applied improv and discovering it through Untold Improv about the power of how habits and applied improv can make the world, make each person be the better people that they want to be in the world. Thank you very much.